Amen, God. You are a God of an amazing invitation to receive the fullness of your love. Yes, God, that day will come soon and very soon when we're going to see our Lord. And we thank you, God, that in the mystery of your love, we're already home and we're going home all at the same time. We thank you, God, for all the saints who have gone before us, the saints who invite us to continue on this journey of faith, to live lives of fullness and vitality in you. We thank you, God, that you listen, you care, you understand, you invite. Every day, oh God, show us more of yourself and the fullness of your love. Open our lives and our hearts to you and to each other and to grace. God, you fill us with all good things, and we are so grateful. Amen. When the Spirit sets us free, we are free indeed. We're excited about this new worship series, Border Free Spirit. It's a series that invites us to know that our Holy Spirit invites us to live beyond borders. The Spirit moves in mysterious ways, in life-giving ways, and that movement is not confined. It is a movement beyond borders. The Spirit invites us to a spiritual adventure. Think about that as a perspective of the faith journey. It's not about checking things off a list. It's not about an institution. It's about an adventure. It's not an adventure of drudgery. It's not something we have to do. It's something we get to do. And the Spirit invites us to live with a new perspective, a perspective of freedom. For almost two years now, we've been needing to wear masks. Many see these masks as an infringement of their freedom. And some are saying, how long are we going to have to put up with these protocols and these restrictions that seem so confining? Actually, what we're doing to keep each other safe is an act of freedom, caring for each other. True freedom is being free enough to give. True freedom is being free enough to care for those around us, to be strong enough in our identity that we can truly be compassionate in how we care for others. Can we wear a mask and still be free? Absolutely. We can be free from the inside out. The God who is constantly working in our spirits to help us to find a place of solid freedom, even when external circumstances can seem limiting or confining. Beyond masks, beyond all confinements, there is a deeper freedom and a deeper openness. And we're going to be exploring that in a variety of ways in upcoming weeks. We'll look at what it means to truly be free, to be free to reveal who God is and who we are, to be bold, to transcend, to aspire, to unite, to build with creativity, to bear witness. With the Holy Spirit, there is always something deeper going on than what we can see, feel, or experience on the surface. The Spirit is always creating something new. And when the Spirit sets us free, we are free indeed. The poet Hiroko Saki said, I am living, breathing freedom. What simplicity and yet power and mystery in that thought. I am. I am living. I am breathing. And I am free. This is the bold invitation of the Spirit to each of us today. To lean into this mystery. Just when we think we know what God is up to, God is doing something more. God is opening new windows and new doors and new options and new possibilities. 
And the scripture speaks of this unfathomable mystery of God. One of our theme scriptures for this series is Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. It's a prayer that calls us to be strong, to grasp, to grasp the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth of spirit-filled living. And yet, just when we think we have it grasped, there's something shifting and moving that calls us to reach again, to open again, and to open even a little bit more, to live lives of mystery and wonder and possibility and expectation. God is up to something, and God is inviting us to observe and to notice and then to see what we can do to be in alignment with that movement that may surprise us every day. The Holy Spirit, the breath of God's love, is not bound by limited thinking and is released through this sense of openness. The Spirit helps us to reclaim our true identities beyond labels and assumptions. Our scriptures today from Hebrews 1, 1 through 4, and 2, 5 through 12, invite us to peel off all the layers, all the layers of stuff that we think to be true, but perhaps is not as true as we thought it was, to peel off the layers of stuff that has led us to places of feeling captive, places of anxiety, to peel off all the layers that block us from all that God wants to show us. The invitation is to soar into the glory of lives well lived. So what is revealed in our scriptures today? What do our scriptures reveal about God? One thing that becomes clear in our scriptures today is that we can't label God. We can't box God. We can't border God. On the spiritual adventure of the Bible in 90 days, we kept learning that over and over and over again. As we moved through the Bible, we would see this description of God, then another description of God. At times, it seemed like the descriptions were contradictory. Actually, I like to think of them as paradoxes. And one of the things I think that sets our faith apart from many faith traditions is that we embrace paradox in some very powerful ways. Just when we think we have God figured out, God reveals something new. Our God is a God who invites us to continue to explore and receive and experience who God is, knowing that there's always more for us to learn. Our scripture today says that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, is a God who invites us into the fullness of this kinship this siblingship with our creator, with Jesus. God is the one who makes holy, and those who are made holy are all from God. Part of what's coming through here is that God is God, and though we are not, we are infused with God. Our scriptures reveal this truth about us. Who are we? We are not who others may say we are. The world has run amok with labels. Red, blue, rural, techie, urban, creative, artist, engineer. All of these one-dimensional tags are confining, limiting. And they suck all the mystery out of human vitality. We are invited to look out and see the wonder of God all around us to know that God is God, and then to remember that we too embody and carry that mystery with us. And when we label people and define people and box them in, we are diminishing the wonder and the mystery of who they are. Our invitation is to know that we are created with that wonder and that mystery, and those around us are as well. Moving beyond labels and boxes is border-free spirit and looking at each other in border-free and opening ways. The poet testifies in Hebrews 2, 6 through 8, What are people, O God, that you are mindful of them, of mortals that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels, and you've placed on them a crown of glory and honor 
putting all things under their authority. Just a little lower than the angels. A little lower. We're, we're imprinted with this divine touch, this holy touch. We're invited to wear the crown of glory and honor now. The Spirit opens us to new possibilities of human flourishing. The Spirit reveals our sacred birthright. We are not unworthy. We are not shameful. We are worthy and honored and treasured, and we're invited to wear the crown of glory now. The Spirit reveals our spiritual freedom. We are spiritual beings. And at heart, spiritual beings is who we are. We are not God, yet we are fully infused with God. So part of the invitation of the weeks ahead in this series is for us to live the God-infused life. Very mysterious on one hand, and simple and open on the other. Another one of these powerful paradoxes. Part of what's stunning in this scripture is that we reveal God. We are free to reveal God as we open ourselves to the movements of the Spirit, and every day we reveal hope for the new day. The book of Hebrews is about the forward look brought into the present moment. It touches back to a previous series. We are called to bring heaven on earth now. Live the mystery, live the simplicity, live the paradox. Scripture invites us to discern ways to live that move us forward. Part of the power of Scripture is that it shows us what matters in life. Jesper Sovertak, a scholar on Hebrews, says, I believe that one of the most important functions of the Word of God is to help us distinguish between what really matters in life and what merely seems to matter. Part of the invitation is to look at all the messaging around us. So much of it has this urgency about it. There are so many messages that say, hey, take this in, look at this, consider this, think about this, believe this, do this, do this now. We're bombarded with it on social media. We're told this is what matters, this is what you need to think about, this is where you need to invest. And yet, so much of it merely seems to matter when you unpeel the layers of it. With all the urgency that we see in our political system right now, and it is important, and it will impact lives, ultimately, what is more important than all the wrangling and the partisan arguments is getting back to who God has called us to be as beloved community to stand true in ourselves and to move further than the arguments that are buzzing around us right now, to capture the mystery and the moment of what it means to be siblings in this world across borders, to be true neighbors. Flora Slauson Wilner has written a wonderful book called Release for Trapped Christians. Part of her Discussion in the book is how what was meant to free us oftentimes confines us. How oftentimes church or faith has become a to-do list. How sometimes we've been surrounded by dogma in a way that we are not free to look at new possibilities and to live that in new ways. Many of us have grown up in traditions where we were taught to pray a certain way at a certain time, sometimes even using very specific prayers. She invites us to prayers that are border-free, prayers of spirit. She describes prayer in this way. Prayer is a willingness to learn to say yes to the limitless energy of God within us. Prayer is learning to say yes on the physical, the emotional, and the mental level. Not yes to some anxious image that has been imposed on us, by ourselves or others, but yes to the living mystery of the deep self as God increasingly reveals our deep self to us. 
To pray is to trust that God will bring forth living fruits in due season as we grow. Not to force the fruits that we think we ought to have right now. To pray is to give ourselves every day to this healing. This healing, releasing light in honest prayer. So that growth will come with grace and not with anxious striving. Too often faith has been about anxious striving. Trying to please some God who can't be pleased. Trying to please some institution that can't be pleased. Trying to force good works. The invitation here is to move into the living mystery. To move into the limitless energy. To move to that place that is border free and hopeful. We are a community of freedom and hope and we support each other on this journey of open arms. Let us lift our lives and our hearts and simply say to God, what next? Help us to see it and help us to experience and help us to find our place, O oh God, in what you are doing. We praise you, God, for border-free hope and border-free spirit. And we thank you, God, that when the Spirit sets us free, we are free indeed. Amen and amen.